the witches got mad at me and there were a couple oh, back no. and forths. For the witches listening right now, please don't hex me anymore. Or at least well, like then. let's talk about it. Their magic works slowly, creepily. Manifest. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. My name is Brie Walker and I have my good friend, formerly known as Jesus Christ, uh, Finger Curl 9000, Shay, as a guest <laughs> co-host on today. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, what you doing, baby? Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to us on Spotify, give us a follow. We have a very funny, very special guest on today. She's a comedian, a TikTok creator. She is the creator of the podcast, We're Having Gay Sex. You can find her at Ash Gav's Comedy on TikTok. Please welcome Ashley, period sex, Gavin. <laughs> uh, I, that, that I demand that everyone call me that from now on. You don't even need the Ashley, just call me period sex. That's it. Um, you don't have a middle name anymore. That's the middle yeah, name. Yeah. Well, thank you. Quite the intro. Thank you for thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. I have been looking at your podcast, listening to your shit for since originally it started and you guys blew up on TikTok, then you got banned, then you made a yes. resurgence, you came back, you were like, "Fuck you guys. I'm going to make it yes. better, bigger, better." And uh, I was like, "I got to have this girl on. Like she's fucking hilarious. She's blowing up in this space like she talks about shit that people aren't talking about, even not even taboo, like even going a level deeper and people love it. Like straight people love it. Gay people love it. It's a fucking thing. It's a whole Thank thing. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We, we try very hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. So like what has TikTok done for you? Like being a comedian, being an artist, being in this pandemic where obviously people aren't able to gather as well as they could have and not even in certain areas to have the success during this kind of weird time. Like what has that been like for you? Yeah, it's wild. I've been a stand-up comedian for over a little over six years. It's going on six and a half years. And prior to that, all kinds of shit. I've done literally everything. I've written multiple pilots. I optioned a format show, like a like a talk show that never got picked up. I've I've acquired literally every failure that one could acquire and been closed so many times and kind of got to some really dark spaces. So when I started the podcast, it was sort of like I really didn't want to create a podcast. I, because I don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't really super love them, to be perfectly honest. I've heard a couple that I think are okay, but um, never enough to like stay in. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, fair. Uh, when I started the podcast, I really wanted it to be something very intentional and absolutely plan Z. Like, this has to work. So when I blew up on TikTok and people came over to the podcast it's been like life altering. I got, got, I got recognized in the streets. Uh, people are taking me way, way more seriously than they used to. Um, it's very nice. I feel very validated. And now all the depression doesn't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> I was probably more no. serious than you, than you intended, but it's been a long time. It's, it's, it feels so fast right now, but it's taken years, years and years. I think so. that's what people don't see when they see people that are that are successful and they just they go, "Oh my god," like like they make all of these assumptions because they don't see all of the shit that you did before that because it's not like everyone has a blog where they like share their life and then you can kind of see the the glow up. I do have a newsletter that people have been reading my very depressing uh, sort of, it's monthly and some months are good and some months are bad and people <laughs> have really stuck, stuck. Yeah, there's like, you know, a couple thousand subscribers over the years. So those are like the real day one hardcore fans or whatever. But some of these tapes on TikTok, one of them from the other day got half a million views and it's from three years ago. And three years ago when a bunch of agents and managers had passed on me because they didn't feel that I was ready and that my stand-up was ready. And then you put it on TikTok and it's like, oh, it got half a million views. And I guess, you know what I mean? Like, it's sort of like- It's like, it was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of, it's, so it's nice. It's a nice fuck you to everyone I wanted to say fuck you to. But that, this is not a great way to introduce myself. I love the, the art of comedy and uh, making people <laughs> laugh, but also fuck you industry. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair dude it's fucking cutthroat and especially just the nature of the job of you putting yourself out there putting your comedy out there i'm not sure if your comedy is something that's like really inexperienced everyone has different types of comedy but um 
Yeah, I, I, putting yourself out there, and I know that it takes forever. Doesn't it take forever to make like a like a minute joke or a two minute joke? Like it's not something that you can just like write on a napkin yeah. and like fucking call it a day. Yeah, you know you're right. It takes. Um, I've had jokes that I've worked on on and off for like four years. That's like the most extreme case, and then there are jokes that you just kind of get right the first time. It also depends on like the length of the joke and the complexity of it. But yeah, it takes about a month. If you are prolific, it takes a month to come up with like five new minutes, I think. And that's if you're like very good. For other people, it takes them a full year to write 20 minutes. So it really depends. So like you're like Gabby Douglas in the Olympics. Like you're just like one joke. You got one fucking shot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I mean... We'll see. I might, that one's a little edgy for, for TikTok, but I would love to, it's a, the joke that took four years. I wrote a joke about how God sexually assaulted the Virgin (laughs) Mary because it so is. It's so, it took me forever to write it because I actually had to make some really good arguments about why you have to argue with people who know their Bible. And I think the best argument is that she's 12. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. God is like literally infinity years old. Like he should yeah. know better than to impregnate a 12 year old. Yeah. But I don't know if you this say- is getting, getting weird for you, but. Uh, Hell no. I mean, 12 year olds did get married. Didn't they get married? They were allowed to get married. Once you started your period, they got married off yeah. to like 40 year olds in like the 17th century. It's so fucked up. And we sing Christmas songs about it. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's just like really fucked welcome, up. Songs. Welcome to the world. <laughs> Oh my god. I think that's fucking hilarious. But yeah, maybe a little too edgy for TikTok considering like they oh, just yeah. they're very censorship very censorship oriented in terms of like yes. those kind of things. Yes. Which suck. I fucking yes. had I fucking had one get taken down and it was like cuz I had a brawl in the shop but it wasn't on me. So it wasn't like a TikTok where I was like a little top blonde lesbian when my like you- in you the know, background fucking, of the shot? It was like, it was um, the sound that was like, oh my God, it's fucking weird, bro. Like, whoa, like check his vibe, that one. And I was like, oh, like women in, in quarantine or whatever. And I put the bra on the ground. Like they didn't know who, what the, you know, the bra was, you know, and they completely took it down. Damn. And blowing up too, like blowing up, blowing up. I'm and sure, I could I'm see sure. it. I could see it going through the stages of it and yeah. they took it down because I had a bra on the shot and it was a black sports bra because it wasn't on me. It was like on the ground. Right. They, they were one. like, no. I was like, are you That's fucking so kidding crazy. me? That's so crazy. Um, yeah, I've had a bunch of, I mean, I was banned, but I've also had a bunch of shit like taken down yeah. and, you know, I've been, I think I've violated every TikTok rule possible. <laughs> so I, I have a second account where I upload all my shit an hour before I actually post them to see if they'll violate something. Ooh. Because yeah, I can't like smart. Yeah, um, it's much easier. Every now and then I'll get like a retroactive. Oh, we had to take this down. But the fake account, the the fake fuck, uh, is working uh, very well. I never even thought about that. Like people have like the part two accounts, like in case something, and so they like put like drafts and like weird shit on there, which is cool. But I never heard about that. That's a good idea, specifically because you had yeah. such a huge account before. Yeah, it was it was okay. I I have a theory that anyone can get. 25 to 50,000 followers on TikTok, anyone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if really? they have one viral video, like, depending on how viral it is. But um, after that, it starts to... So, you know, I had, like, 20,000, 25,000 followers on my old one. I would like yeah. them back very much, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, well... <laughs> no. Aren't you... Don't you have, like, witches out to get you or something, Ashley Gavin? You've got, you got something did. fucking freaky going on. I yeah. did have uh, the witch community not super like a tweet that I made on <laughs> on I made. Oh, I no. So look, I don't know anything really about witches. I don't really have any thoughts. Like I, I feel like I feel about witches the way like liberal straight white guys feel about me as a lesbian they like don't like yeah. neither here nor there i'm not yeah. a bother to no. them you know what i mean like they don't they're not thinking about me it's not a big deal they don't care they want me to get you know what i mean they're like yeah me and witches there's no overlap there's no need for any kind of controversy you know what i mean but i i don't really scroll in tiktok because i think social media despite fueling my career is dangerous and toxic so i don't scroll through tiktok i don't watch no. tiktoks yeah. i don't scroll through Instagram. I stay off that stuff. So, but I did, you know, every time you open the app before you page comes up, that's the first thing I got a witch TikTok in there, witch talk, but it was like a pro black lives matter, witch talk. And I was like, Oh, this is cool. Dope. 
And then I was like wondering, oh, I wonder how many people are hating on this because I like to read the comments of idiots. So I'm scrolling through and some idiot was like, you know, all lives matter type of thing, right? And uh, I was just like, this is so funny because this conservative person is commenting on a witch's TikTok. Yeah. You, you think that they, you know, a conservative person would be like, you're a witch. Ah, you know, you know like, wouldn't they be like, don't yeah. you worship Satan? Don't, aren't you a pagan? Like that kind of shit. Like no Harry Potter movies. Like I fucking yeah, hate that. No. You know, like he, X he didn't, Harry Potter. He didn't reference it at all. And wow. I thought that was so funny. And I, so I tweeted, I can read the tweet if you guys are interested. Yes. Oh, sure. Cause I, I heard you talking about it and I, cause I, did, I didn't know what the tweet was. And I was like, damn. This is probably from a while ago. Their magic works slowly, creepily. Manifest. It was essentially me being like, you're missing a layup, Republican. Republican, shit on her for worshiping Satan. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. like, come on, that's a softball. You should be able to knock that one out of the park. You're, yeah. you're, but he, and then the witch community felt that. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I didn't phrase this the right way. But the witch community felt that what I was saying was, ah, witches worship Satan. I wasn't saying that. I was saying that's <laughs> That's what Republicans think. Yes, exactly. So yes, the the witches got mad at me and there were a couple oh, back no. and forths in the tweet. Uh -oh. so for the witches listening right now, I know you don't worship. Actually, I don't really know what you do, but I'm pretty sure you don't worship Satan and I respect you and please don't hex me anymore. Yeah, seriously. If you have a voodoo doll of Ashley, throw in the trash, put some sage on her, sew her up. Or at least like let's good. talk about it please feel free to slide into my DMs and educate me. I'm serious. <laughs> I'd rather talk about it. Yeah, me too. Honestly, I didn't realize how big the witch community was until oh. I got on Witch Talk. Like somehow I got on Witch Talk and the first thing I got was somebody with like a little recorder and they were singing fucking songs to a frog. And I was like, okay. What? Honestly, that's good content. I, I will watch anything in a, with a frog in it. Oh yeah, it's like frog talk and witch talk. I didn't even know frog talk was a fucking thing. Now, oh, yeah. like, I haven't been on that. that. What, what goes on in it? Because I only, I only saw that. You know, that this one, is going to surprise you, but frog okay. talk is mostly frogs. It's, it's frog primarily. It's primarily. <laughs> mind blown right now. <laughs> it's, it's mostly no frogs. No way. And uh, my friend has a frog, so she, she, I know about it from her, from her TikToks. Holy uh, shit. Just cute, cute little froggies. The whitest thing I ever saw was, this reminds me of this. It's so fucking funny. My parents live in like a very, you know, they have like live in like this upper class middle neighborhood, middle class neighborhood, right? There's like mm -hmm. golf carts and shit like that. And I was home for like a hot second and I was going for a walk. This was like the beginning of quarantine and I was staying there a little bit because it was just easier. And um, I was walking and I saw this guy that had a turtle and a frog that was like on the side of the sidewalk and I was like oh my god like that's so cute like are you helping it like I don't know I just thought that they found these two things and they were just kind of like oh my god you know it was like a, a father like a super dad guy he had like literal dad balances on and like this <laughs> little girl and so I thought that it was cute like maybe the little girl was like oh daddy I, I found like the this frog in this turtle like so cute. you know and they were wanting to keep it or something like that I just like this whole thing in my head and Turns out the dad was like, oh, these are our pets. You know, we're getting them outside, giving them some exercise. I haven't been out in a while. And we're giving them <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Fucking exercise. I'm like. Frog's got to hop. Apparently you have to do that with your, with your frog and your turtle. And you have to get them out into the sunlight. If I had a frog, which I do not, and I never will, because I'm not, oh, fuck, I'm going to offend frog, <laughs> frog people. Um, I'm not a frog person. I never will be a frog person. And I'm sorry. Apologies to all the frog people out there. I would take my frogs outside though. That's what I would do. I literally didn't know people did that. Like I didn't know people did that. They're like amphibians, reptiles, amphibians. I just assumed they would stay, stay in there and they would take them out and just like put them in the house. I didn't realize they were going to take them for a walk. My friend Remy <laughs> will, will take her little frog terrarium outside on her grandmother actually passed away, but on her grandma's balcony. I, I know this because it, Remy would invite me over and we'd hang on the balcony. And she has a podcast too called How Come. It's a pretty big podcast, very oh, big cool. po podcast. Um, and we would hang out on the balcony and she'd bring her frogs out. So I know they do like the fresh air. You learn new things every day. Holy <laughs> shit. I never would have known. So Ashley, has it been being queer and not growing up, but molding into a comedian and, and kind of going through 
and being an artist in that space. Specifically like a lesbian comedian or a person who is a lesbian who is also a comedian? Yeah, like a person who's just yeah. a part of the oh. gay community. Uh, yeah. you've been out for like 10, 10 or so years. I oh think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was out long before I did comedy. I mean, I think there's, it can be tough because you know, the industry can sometimes be tokenizing to queer people with women. There's this whole like too gay, not gay enough thing. Yeah. Um, and I sort of fall into the middle. So I have a, tr- I have a lot of trouble in acting with, with casting. Then I'm like, I will not be able to cast as straight because I think people can sense that I'm gay, but I can't really book the gay roles because they're written for much butcher or sort of uh, yeah. more mass women. So that's, that can be tough. And I think there's also like the aspect that like, straight people do really love my comedy and until recently were the majority of my fan base. Crazy. Um, until the podcast came out. Yeah. And I'm very accustomed, you know, doing colleges and cruises and clubs. I'm very accustomed to performing for an audience that's sort of representative of our society. It's a different audience performing for an all gay crowd. It's, it's just fundamentally different. And I think for me, like I can feel it in the room because it's happened before. You know, obviously these are my podcast fans. So that makes it a little different. I don't know how to say this, but they sort of expect a certain type of comedy from you or a certain okay. point of view yeah. and from both sides you just want to be able to be yourself and kind of like for the straight people you don't want people to say that was too gay but from the gay people you want to be able to talk about not gay stuff so yeah. you kind of just want people to just appreciate what you're putting out there regardless of sexuality do you feel like you have to manage expectations when it comes to doing comedy for the straight community like is it something to where no, you're like straight people no. are the best audience in the entire world so they're okay. <laughs> Do you find them to be like an easier audience 100 percent, 100 percent. because queer people you know i put them in the same category as like sort of other very woke people okay uh, very oh. woke people attending a comedy show sort of go yeah. in with the attitude that they're gonna be offended a little bit harder to please yeah like I have a joke about picking a sperm donor I'm not going to do the whole joke but basically I one of the jokes is that I say that I have a date coming up with my gynecologist she's taking me to get frozen yogurt if you didn't get that joke this frozen yogurt is at one point self-serve and I can have whatever flavor I want vanilla chocolate Chinese you guys know the flavors and the (laughs) joke there thank you the joke there is that vanilla and chocolate can be both a reference to race or a flavor. And obviously Chinese is not a flavor of yogurt. It is a race or an ethnicity. So I did that joke for a mostly queer audience and about half the audience laughed. And the other half, as soon as they heard Chinese, they put kind of their wall up. They thought about it. They they like kind of thought about it for a second. And then they kind of chuckled afterwards when they are able to be like, okay, not racist. And then they like, kept going it yeah a second it just takes them a second and so it, it can be harder to build trust and momentum because you kind of need that trust and i feel like for kind of good reason queer people other minorities when confronted with a typical comedy club environment they don't trust it i think they should i think you should go into a comedy show assuming that everyone's not going to be racist and then when someone says something that you think is racist you kind of laugh at it and you're like, wait a minute, what was, and then, you know, you kind of think like, yeah. let them, let them do their thing. And then you can do the post analysis afterwards, go up to the comedy manager, tell them, Hey, the set made me uncomfortable. Or you can just get up and leave if they're actually being racist. But if you're constantly True. or homophobic or whatever it might be, yeah. but if you're constantly always on alert, it's not, you're not going to have fun. And then you lose all of the fun jokes. Yeah. I don't know. This is, these are just my, I wonder if it's just reactive. Like they're reactive, so they're like, oh my God. And then they can't just enjoy the rest of the set, even if there was just like maybe one joke or something like that. Or like, yeah, it wasn't remotely racist. This is also a generalization, right? Like, not all queer audience members are like this. This is just something that sort of, when you do a room full of men, there's other problems, like straight white men, there's other problems that you encounter. Like, they don't know anything about women. They assume yeah. women aren't going to be funny. Like yep. jokes fly over their head. Every if you have yeah. one type of person in an audience and no one else represented, it's going to be a weird room because yeah. everyone laughs at different things. And the beauty of having a diverse room of people in a comedy room is 
you're getting the full range of the human experience sort of represented in the laughter, which is a really kind of beautiful thing because then everyone can kind of laugh together about things that maybe they didn't really know about before. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, I, yeah. I was at a comedy show with Eliza Schlesinger. She came mm -hmm. to Cincinnati and she, I love her comedy. I, I thought it was fucking hilarious. She came a couple years ago. And I remember like a joke that was clearly like, I thought it was funny because it was, it was something gay. It was gay and it was like the a baker oh, named but, Steph or something but, like that. But straight people worry about laughing at gay stuff. That's a true. Queer people, <laughs> Why? Why? Because they're afraid they're woke straight people. They're afraid that they're going to laugh at the wrong thing and offend somebody. And somebody is going to think like, yeah, they're, they're one of us. Same thing happens with race jokes too. Like I have jokes about race and I tell them and like the people who I'm talking about, let's say it's a joke about racism towards black people. Black people will tend to laugh and the white people are the ones like, can we laugh at that? Is that allowed? Yeah. And they will legit yeah. look at the black people in the room to see if they're laughing. It's, it's wild. It's crazy. Oh, Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. No, no, you're good. I, that's how, what happened to me. Like there was like this, uh, this cis white like couple that were sitting next to uh, my girlfriend at the time and I, and it was like a, it was a, it was a gay joke and it was really, really funny. And like, we were laughing hysterically and like, they obviously knew that like we were gay. We were holding hands, whatever. And they looked at us. They were kind of like, yes, they looked. And they looked at us and I, we were just cracking up. And I saw them out of my periphery, like looking at us to kind of like, and I could kind of feel the energy. And then they like kind of started, they were kind of like, ha ha, like, oh yeah. Like, huh. yeah, yeah. You know, gay they stuff. No, so I guess what I'm trying to say, I made it kind of targeting queer people, but it's everybody. If yeah. you don't, if you're, if it's something you're not comfortable with and it's something that you're not used to, especially if you're of the woke persuasion and you're really trying to be a good person, which is great, you, it, you kind of want to make the room more diverse to represent all the different types of laughs that are going to be in a comedian set. I feel like people don't realize how hard it is to toe the line with that because like, you know, Dave Chappelle's like most, I don't know if it's the most recent one, but like the, he had such a good Netflix special. I thought, I love him. He's from mm -hmm. Cincinnati, or not from well, Cincinnati. He's from the greatest Ohio. of all time. Yeah, not, he, yeah, I absolutely love him. And he had made, cracked a lot of jokes about like the gay community and the trans community. And I thought it was hilarious. And I think it's going to be real. It's really hard to like, you want to use comedy to like bring people together and like yeah. realize the differences in the community. And then it's a good thing to have those differences. And, and if you bring it to light, you can realize that like, we're kind of all the same, even though we seem apparently different. And I feel like comedy can bring people together. And it is really, really hard to, to toe that line between like, what is racist? What is this? Can you make a joke about something that, that isn't you? Like, can you make yes, a gay joke yes. and be straight? Who, who can you make it? Yeah. yeah. Can you make a joke about, you know, people who are trans and, and be lesbian and be a lesbian? And I think you can. And I agree. I, I don't know. Like it, it is so fucking complex. And like, I really hate that some people are getting, some people, have, you know, been trying to be canceled, some comedians yeah. and things like that. Like for things that like, i never felt personally that they, they did anything wrong. And it is hard. I think it's case by case with all, with like that kind of stuff. But like as a gay person, if I, when I hear a straight guy, straight white guy tell a really good joke about lesbians, I find that incredible. I'm always yeah. like that yeah. to me, that's like the highest honor because I'm like, how did you tap into something that you are so estranged from like how were you able to get inside my brain like damn that was amazing and for me i'm not offended by the fact that he attempted to do that he probably <laughs> on the way to writing it he maybe bombed a few times which is even more you know amazing i posted a joke about racism towards asian people in kind of rural america kind of alluding to the way that why pan asian restaurants exist which has a really long history of racism towards Chinese folks. And yeah, they're just putting different cuisines together and just calling it Pan-Asian. It's bullshit. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, because it's evolved for so long, I, I wouldn't say it's bullshit, but it was an adaptation to the fact that, first of all, white people wouldn't give them any other jobs, so they had to go gotcha. into the restaurant business. And then, I don't want to butcher the, th there's a lot no, of you're fine. information on yeah. this. But I wrote a joke about this, and it's one of my favorite jokes. I get a lot of feedback that it's a 
good joke. I've also gotten feedback from people that this isn't your joke to say. And I think that it can be really subjective whether or not your identity claims ownership over a topic. And I'm of the opinion that you're never going to get white people to understand racism if white people are talking to other white people about racism. Yeah. So that's, that's my thought on it. I mean, people are straight people to to straight people about gay people and trans people and things like this. Yeah. People are going to listen to people that are more like them, you know? Yeah. So it would be better for assimilation overall. When you were saying that like a, like a cis white man says like a really good gay joke or like, or something like that, I feel like it holds more weight. Like you said, because they had to think about actually what it means and like really dive into the culture without being in the culture. Yeah. which shows like they actually really wanted to learn more about it and do it in a tasteful way. And like you said, exactly. like bombing, like doing it and it not turning out well. And then they could have been like, Ooh, like not a topic for me. Not going to do it anymore. Yeah. Like, not going to put it in my set. No. Instead they're like, no, but like, I, I'm going to keep going. Like I'm going to keep trying. They probably talked to lesbians. They probably did the work. They probably Googled. And like, whenever I'm talking about a topic that is not, mine or is foreign to me i always try and do the work and talk to people and research and if you know if anyone's listening to this right now being like i don't really agree with ashley on these things reach out to me and tell me why because yeah i will go back and either rewrite the joke or cut it if i have messed up open the dialogue i definitely agree with that i think there was one guy that really took me off guard it was like one of my roommates um like boyfriends which typically like they're not super super they're not super woke um <laughs> trying to be like fucking secret um but one of them was and it kind of, like came out of the blue i like came home like everyone's smoking weed like we're having a good time and i like i come home i set myself down and i sit down and this guy we ended up having this conversation with one of my roommate's ex-boyfriends now and he i, I forget what he asked me but he said something like very I- intrigued but not looking for any agenda or anything and he was just like how's being gay been for you? He's like, I, I feel like it must be something that is kind of hard. And he, he tried to like assimilate it. I forget what it was. We tried to like say something about when he started like a new team on like a sports team, trucks, sports, yeah. chicks, something like that. And, uh, and how it was hard for him to assimilate into the, because he was new or something like that. And like he made the connection between that and like coming out. And I thought it was so interesting. Whenever I join a new gym, I'm always like, you know what? It must be hard to be gay. It must be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm putting him on a pedestal. Maybe I'm putting him on a pedestal because I don't get that he question tried. a lot. He used what he knew. He was like, sometimes the guys go up to me and they tap my butt. And I think about it. I think about it. And then I get scared. It must be hard. I don't know from Brooklyn, but he's from Brooklyn now. Uh, but yeah, it, it did. It, I think every, like any tiny ounce of someone like having a sense of wokeness, I'm like, oh my God, like you're amazing. Um, right. You're just happy that people are trying. And I think, I don't know, you can't, no, you can't never speak for everybody's experience. But I think if, if you are trying, like genuinely, most people have room to let you make a few. I know as a gay person, if you're a straight person and you're looking for your words and you don't say the right thing, but your heart is in the right place, yeah, call me a dyke a few times. I'll like, I'll yeah, be- <laughs> you'll let it pass. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, say something and be like, oh man, like you, you look like a dyke today, and just kind of be like. <laughs> just fake them out Honestly, like, you're angry. I, like i don't think there's a straight person on the planet who would make that mistake but uh i do i do think <laughs> i've heard some weird shit it's so funny that you think it's nice that he asked you what it was like being gay or whatever i i can't if you one like it if one more it's just like i've been asked so many times like was it hard coming out was coming out really hard yeah you know and uh, it's like so hard to explain to them, like you come out all the time. Like there was what, what, like my big coming out party, was that hard? Like, what are you talking about? Like it's-, it, yeah. it's which, which one? Yeah, exactly. And yes, also yes. And what do you, you want five years of, of stories from that time period where I was yeah. like constantly coming out all the time? <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I know they're trying, so. Yes. They try, they think that they're being very deep and they're yeah. like, just not. That's, that's, that's the impression that I get every time. I think it's some dude being like, and probably ultimately their goal is to ask me how lesbians have sex. I think sometimes it's like, I'm like, what do you really want to get at? 
the agenda, which I mean, you can find it out by your podcast because I feel That's like true. you said it that you have a lot of straight dudes on your podcast and you can just say, dude, just listen to my fucking podcast or give me $5. I'll add you to my Patreon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. We talk about it a lot on the podcast. Um, I don't know if you have any straight listeners who are interested in <laughs> listening to this right now, but we do. We cover a lot of gay sex on it. <laughs> there you go. There's the plug. We're having gay sex. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have mainly queer people, but I honestly don't know. Like, I have no fucking clue. I wish it, I wish it had a, a little, I could do a little survey and send it out to everyone and just be like, hey, gay or straight. Have you looked at the uh, Spotify data? Um, I'm on Spotify and I have data. I just don't. So what you got to do is you got to look at the music they listen to. Ooh, didn't think about that. Yeah, you will. Yeah, some, that's slick. You should, you'll see some uh, girl in red in there and some king princess. You you'll go. see. You can tell what, by what they're listening to. Gives you All an right. idea. I need to look more into that, but I, I feel like it is gay because I have mainly a gay, mostly like 80% women on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So there is some 20% men on there. And that's where I get all the hate shit. So that's fine. They oh, you get hate shit? Yeah. Like on, I've had a few like go viral, viral and go on straight TikTok. And like, those are the ones that I get all of these religious shit that goes in there. Cause I, I'll make some with my oh. grandpa or my dad. It's like super wholesome. It's like super wholesome shit. And like, it, it goes on a straight TikTok because it blows up. And then I get all of the hate stuff. And then I have people that are in the comments like, no, don't say that about her grandpa. He's a saint. Ah. And they like go back and forth. And I just kind of watch. And I'm like, this is interesting. Oh, the, well, I thought you meant like straight up like homophobia. Oh, yeah. Like you're oh, going yeah. to hell. Like the really? gun oh, with, against like the flag. Oh, yeah. Like the flag on stuff. fire emoji. Talking about my like, I feel bad for your dad. I feel bad for your grandpa. It's an abomination. Wow, like, I don't get shit. it. Yeah. I don't get any of that. <clears throat> Yeah, just on the viral super ones that goes to straight TikTok. Just those ones. Other than that, I, pretty chill. I'll get occasionally, occasionally on a super viral video. Oh, you know, just I didn't laugh at this. I'm not funny. And then I just always reply, well, you're boosting my engagement. So thank you yeah. for letting no, me know. Thank, thank <laughs> you for commenting to put me on the algorithm. So Ashley, what do you think is like, what's your take on gay TikTok, lesbian TikTok, like these young, Younger. the young ones? That's, yeah, that was Shay's question. Like the young, the young TikTokers. They have a, they have a lot of opinions that they, they think do. are the concrete answer to everything. And it drives me nuts. But that's how you are when you're, I used to be a teacher and when you're at that age, now I'm going to sound old and shit like that, but like we were all the same. The difference was that we didn't have access to the internet to kind of assert, I have opinions now. People are going to listen. I have the brain, I have the brain power and the capacity to formulate opinions. And I also am very emotional. And so uh, I'm going to talk about it, but we didn't have like TikTok threads and shit like that. So no posting. So yeah, you know, when I read something, the only time that I ever really take some kind of comment or whatever seriously is if I feel that someone might get hurt by it or is hurt. Uh, no. If I think they're just blown off steam, then I mostly just ignore it. Because I think if you do good work, good work speaks for itself. I don't know if that answers your question, but I do think we as a society need to stop using social media as a form of actual discourse. That, like, yeah. it's, it's very dangerous for a number of reasons. Yeah. And I feel like you have these, these young people, because like, I mean, TikTok was young, like it used to be musically. So it used to be no. a very younger demographic than it is now, which is typical for just social media in general when things pop up. MySpace, mm. Facebook, Instagram, all that shit. And so it started off super young and you have all of these famous people who are much more famous than the millennials, the Gen Xers who are just now getting on, which, you know, yeah. literally just like happened. And they have so much influence, but they have so little worldview. And I'm not saying everyone, maybe there were some that like didn't, what weren't in public school and their parents, they traveled the world. I don't fucking know. That wasn't me. But, like, they just, like, they are in one spot. They haven't really learned much. I mean, I was a fucking dipshit when I was 16. So, like, I I, I don't know. I don't know if y'all were nice, but I was a dipshit. Yeah, I was too. (laughs) I'm still a dipshit. It's like 
<laughs> some of these kids don't even go through their like ugly phase, like middle school and like half of, like high school where you're just supposed to be like not cute at all. Now they just look like they're 20 year olds, like right off the bat. It, I, I don't blame them. They're, you know, they're not, not really given a chance to, to fully complete their childhood. And for some, yeah. not, you know, not all of them, they're held to these standards guided by a virtual becoming, but, you know, kind of real world for them. But, um, and for all of us, social media is my job. It's very real. But, you know, when you're, um, Lisa Ling did a wonderful um, piece on this for CNN. I think it's called Lisa Ling. This this is like this is life with Lisa Ling. I don't remember okay. what the episode is called, but it's about. It's, I think it might be called Screen Addiction. So it's really oh. good if you're young and you're. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Really good, but yeah, it's extremely addicting. It's changing all of our brains, not just young people. Yeah, but I do feel sad for them because yeah. you know, for me, I felt like I was a kid really basically till I got to college I was a child and then I started thinking more about the way that I dressed you know I I'm pretty relaxed I kind of gotten that stuff later than life than most girls but I feel like when I was 13 14 makeup meant lip gloss maybe some eyeliner you know what yeah. I mean? Now yeah, you got some, some full contour. Bring all the boys to the yard. My lip gloss, no. all the, or my fucking milkshake. Lip gloss. Milkshake. There's a lip gloss. Out. Anyways, <laughs> my lip yeah, gloss be popping. Pop 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 gloss be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I never really thought about like though, like the impact of those people. I always thought about the impact of like those famous people on like in other impressionable young people who are looking up to them in admiration, yeah. you know, idealizing yeah. them and things like that. And the impact that it has on, on, on those people. But it also, I never really thought about, you know, they're also young. They just have so much influence, but like it, it is almost like a smaller version of some, a celebrity, a child star yeah, um, yeah. in a milder form on social media behind a screen. And I never really, I never really thought of that until now, but like, I guess it is sad for them too. I just never really, because I guess, because we didn't grow up with it. We didn't grow up no, with, with no. all of it. It was like half. We kind of half had it. Yeah. We got, you, like, you guys seem pretty young to me. So I don't even know. I don't we know how old you guys had are. Instagram I know. Like I look Snapchat. like I'm 18. I'm 25. Like, and I'm 24. I'm, okay. I'm 32. So I, okay. you know, for me, when I was a kid, there was AIM and AOL. AOL, we oh, yes. Instant message each other. Chat but I, I, even I remember I was on there all the fucking time. I lived my life on yeah. AIM. And in retrospect, I imagine things, you know, probably would have had a better time if I had gotten outside and played with my friends a little more. Yeah. <laughs> did you have chat? Okay, did you ever get on chat roulette? Oh, my God. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Oh my God. Oh, holy shit. I remember I was like 12 and my friends thought it'd be funny to get on. Well, my one friend who's actually gay now, so we're both gay. I don't know why we were getting on it. All we saw were dicks the whole time. God. Oh yeah. It's a lot of dicks. Literally there was a one that I came across and it was like someone's dick in a, in a little like set. And the dick was like, it literally had a bathing suit on it. It had a bathing suit, like a fucking bikini, not like a Ken doll. It was like a Barbie doll dick. If there weren't censorship, that would go so viral on TikTok. That would be that would be amazing. Should make an OnlyFans just for that. Just for dick Honestly, up in, like, I, little dioramas. Like yeah. a dick zilla, like going through a diorama of Tokyo or some shit, shit like that. <laughs> Godzilla like dick, a, just like yeah, burning down the fucking city. But I remember watching those and thinking that they were be like slightly uncomfortable, but like being kind of like, wow, like people fucking do this for a living. Like, <laughs> oh my God, no vaginas anywhere. Anyways. But, no, no, no. Um, women are, women are better than that. Speaking of that, Shay on her episode talked about, cause she gets a lot of shit from younger lesbians about her finger preferences and the fingers that she chooses to use. Cause she used to go by finger curl 9,000. I, I made so much fun Brandon. of you for that. Why do people know that? <laughs> no what? Like, did you make a TikTok being like, I'm a, I'm a pinky guy all the way? Like, what are you, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I was more of like a thirst trapping lesbian in the beginning for cheap views. I don't know. I just came to the app and I was like, sure, I'll do that. Because I seem to fit the part of it. But yes, like, I'm yeah. not one of them at all. And it's awful. 
Yeah, you so are. Shut the I fuck up. Oh my God. I'm not a thirst trap lesbian. I like them. They're great. It's hot. Sex sells. Don't be ashamed of it. I, but I think any thirst trapping on TikTok is weird. Not just gay thirst trapping. But okay. sorry. What was the finger thing? I don't even remember what were the first one, but it just said the like, I referenced to using these two fingers in it for whatever reason. What's wrong with and these two fingers? I don't understand. Yeah. Apparently it's supposed to be these two. And I've gotten that on a lot Who's of telling videos. You that? Children, I believe. Yeah, the kids that are not, no one, first of all, I'm going to backtrack on that sentence. They're not old enough. They don't know. They don't know. No. They're not fingering. That's why I just called in the finger police because they also, always have something to say. Like, I'm not scared. It, like, ooh, it depends I'm what ang- It depends on what angle you're coming from as well. Like, no. there's a lot of different factors that go into pick True. your finger choice. It's, it is situational. You never know which one's going to yeah. have to maneuver. So I don't understand why they would do that to you. Haters out there. Haters got to be your motivators. But you changed your fucking name. Her name was Fingerphone 9000. You changed your, you changed your name. I can no longer make fun of you now. And since then, I, like, gained more followers than I had. Really? I thought it would be the opposite. I really did. But I think Katie's doing a, doing a get some good influence on you. Because I was like, don't change your name. It's your trademark. She's, yeah, she's uh, busting my ass on it. Yeah, that makes sense. But, yeah, finger preferences are fucking funny. Ashley, what are yours? I don't. Uh, I'm not keeping track. I guess I use my index finger and my middle finger primarily. And then switch to my two... My ring finger and my middle finger if I'm at an angle that requires it. I feel the same way. So I don't know what, what the fuck's going on because I feel like most people who at least have some semblance of what they know they're doing feel the same way. So, Jay. I, I'm you- not going to say that I know what I'm doing. I just don't think, no. it, I, I don't think it really matters. That's why I just, I don't care about the comment. I'm like, okay, pop off, but do what you need to do to please whatever you're doing. Like, that's none of my business. Right, yeah, exactly. Like, you, you make your finger choice, whatever it might be. Like, I did not ask at all for an opinion, but thank you. <laughs> Who has an opinion on social media? Everyone has a platform. Yeah. Well, some sort of a platform or no platform. They just can fucking say whatever they want. So, Ashley, about this period sex shit, I, I think it's so funny because it gets brought up and like, it's gotten brought up in, like, a couple episodes about you being obsessed with period sex. I wouldn't say I'm, um, I think, I think it has gotten a little out of control. Yeah. <laughs> it was very funny, but I do enjoy, I think it's fun and very intimate to have sex with a girl when she's on her period. I think it then got misshapen into <laughs> that. That's my preference. Uh, it is, it, I have no preference between the two, but I would, I have no hesitation going into period sex and can be fun can can bring something different to, yeah, the, yeah. to the table so that's that's kind of yeah but that was on page cole from um mtv's are you the ones episode yes yes are you yeah. the one yeah i thought it was hilarious i had never really thought about it before it was something funny because i was like i wonder if like because i know that like you're dating someone and i was like i wonder if she was like hey just like are you into this? Like, is this something that you're into? Like, I'd be totally cool with it if you are. Like, <laughs> she had, and with everybody that I've ever had period sex with, it's always been, oh, I, I have my period, so no. The and funny story for that one. Pulling out the tampon? No. The first night that I met my girlfriend, she thought I had a dick. She- she got me like violently high on whatever weed that she had and, and like I got sick and I forgot to leave the toilet seat like put it back down and like we're <laughs> making out and, stuff. and like she keeps trying to go like downwards and I was like this is the first time I'm meeting this girl like I'm on my period worst timing like I don't want that to be like first impression and I just like stop and I'm like I'm a woman but and like for whatever reason, because the toilet seat and all of that just added up as to wait, why me having a day? But why did you say I'm a woman? I was just saying, but like I'm on my period. I didn't know how to word it. Was she asking you if you were a woman? Like what was <laughs> what was the context of that? I have I so never said I am a woman. Like ever in my life. 
ever. Not, I'm the not only, great the at only time, <laughs> I just can't, it's sort of just being like, to me, it's just sort of like you being like, I am Jewish. Like, why did, in that way, what does that have to do with, with anything, right? I guess you were having, did you sense, you had to have sensed that she was wondering if you uh, were cis, trans, non-binary, whatever it might be. You had to. The no. only reason that I would ever say, also, it's not clarifying. I am a yeah. woman. You could still have a penis. You know what I mean? Like, there are women no, with yeah. penises, there are men with vaginas. Yes. But it's just so funny to me. I okay. don't know why that was the first thing to come to my head to say towards her. You I must have known. I should have just been like, I must have been like, period. shit, 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 shit. I left the toilet seat up. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. Um, I'm a woman. Like that. <laughs> uh, just to make so sure. Uh, but yeah, I, every time that I've had period sex, it's always been like, um, I'm on my period. I, you know, the whole the what what girls do when they're on the periods. Oh, I can't. <laughs> and and then and then I'm always like, oh no, like we should. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes. And then I'm I'm like I'm prepared for that moment. Like I always have a summer's eve wipe. I always <laughs> right by the night. I I always have a towel. I I I'm ready for that moment. Do you ever get, is it something to where, and, and consent is always, and you never want to coerce someone, but you kind of have to kind of gauge, is it like, do they really just not want to have sex? Because oh. They're uncomfortable and they're bloated and stuff like that. But then, because it's like, is it just because they don't, they feel weird because of the blood, right? Well, you can say and that. They would, you can, yeah. You can say, are you tired? Or do you have a headache? You know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> yep. And then you say, like, obviously, if it makes you really uncomfortable, we don't have to, but it does not bother me. And also, I just think it's some of it's like about the mood. Like you can re-ask consent questions as you're having sex and you can True. change your answer. So, you exactly. know, that's why it's important to be like engaging with the person, just really open communication lines. So like, you know, maybe the tampon in is in at the beginning and she feels more comfortable and she's <laughs> ready for, for me to take it out. But, uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes she's not, and you don't. Uh, part of the podcast where we try to answer your questions on life, love, happiness that we probably have no business trying to answer. If you'd like to submit a question that can be chosen for this podcast, please send it to questions at queertalkpodcast.com uh, to be featured. Email is also in the description below. You can put your age, name, wherever you're at in the world. If you want to stay anonymous, we can do that as well. Keep your identity private. But yeah, this is the question. She's anonymous and she wants to go by Baby Gay. So this is Baby Gay. She's asking, I'm wondering how early two girls usually have sex. I always hear about hetero couples, but what about women? Does it tend to be sooner, later? I know it depends on the couple, but damn, a girl needs some guidance. I've been talking to a girl for four months and I'm flying to see her, uh, fulfilling all the, those stereotypes I know. We have feelings for each other, but I'm very confused about what is expected of me since she's been with girls before and I haven't. I know it's all about when you and your girl are ready and everyone's consenting, but how do you know if you're ready? Do a lot of girls expect it to happen on the first date? I don't think anyone expects it to happen no. on the first date. Yeah. I think you sometimes are hoping, but no. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, yeah. you're not expecting. And I think you already know the answer to your question. It's whenever you are ready and talk about it with your partner, let her know that this is your first time with a girl. I, I hope that you've already told her that before you bought the plane ticket. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. But, you know, like if she is a good person, the way that you are a good person, it will be an open dialogue and you can start up and slow down and just keep talking. If you keep talking, you'll figure it out. Honestly, it's just whenever like the mood hits right. It's not, I don't think it's something that you can exactly plan. Like I've met people and it didn't happen the first time I met them. I didn't go in thinking about it, but then there's been times I've met people and it completely just did happen. It wasn't, I was no headspace of being going on these things and like, yes, I'm going to get laid tonight. Like, I mean, like it, it's a nice, it's a nice like treat, but like, yeah, I, I'm not expecting it. So you've never walked into a date because like I'm not saying that I have like expected it or, or, or thinking that it was something that was like a definite or anything like that. But like, have you ever had those days where you're so fucking confident and you're like, it's fucking happening. Like it's, it's going to happen. It might happen with the bartender. It might happen with the waiter or my date or maybe a, 
a three, a threesome. We don't know. But have you ever had that, that confidence where you're like, yeah, that's fucking happening? Um, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the confidence is more like, I think she's really into me. I think I have way more confidence about like making a first move, like kissing. Gotcha. But even that, I wouldn't be like, I've kissed on most of my first dates or if I've at least felt confident enough that leaving, I'm like, okay, this will be a second date. So no, I, I don't, I just, I don't know. I've just never really made that assumption. I think I'm just very, I, I like feeling present. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And not so much about what's about to happen. True. Yeah. I, I just want to kind of be with the person. I think it's more of like a confidence standpoint of like, uh, this could be happening or I'm ready for it if it, if it, oh, sure, if it feels sure. right. Oh, sure, sure. No, I don't think yeah. And, and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I would say for baby gay, yeah, definitely have that conversation. And, and there are, you know, girls are so, women are so understanding. I mean, like, I, if she really likes you and has feelings for you, like, it, it, it's not going to matter if you haven't had sex for the first time, you know, yeah, and it, absolutely. Or, or have to have all of this experience and things like that. Um, some girls are really into other women who aren't experienced. Yeah, it's true. Um, it, can, it can be as much of a turn on for someone as experience might be. Yeah, no. exactly. Like being a teacher, you know, like that, there's a whole thing about that. Yeah. And, and teaching somebody. And, and even if you're not into that, just if you like someone, you want them to, to feel good and you want them to feel okay. And you don't have to be super confident. And it's one of those things where like, if you, and you might not have done the work of knowing your body and, and masturbating and stuff like that. But like, it honestly, like, at least for me, like, I remember like my first time, like, I kind of had this thought of like, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I feel like I have a good gist and I'm just going to kind of wing it. And I felt like I went into it with an optimism of like, I'm going to wing it and I'm going to, I'm going to see what's going on. And it, it, it ended up working out like how it was supposed to. So like, it yeah. will work out how, how it's supposed to. And it is supposed to be kind of nerve wracking and it's, and it's nervous and you're making this commitment of traveling to see this person, which puts some added pressure because you're probably going to be staying with them, but I've never met them, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is something yeah. I just did recently. And it, it's, it can be a lot. It can be a lot. Yeah. Honestly, if you're worried about it, take it off the table for the first night. True. Just be like, hey, I'm, I'm so excited to see you. I'm very attracted to you. I'm a little nervous because I've never been with a woman before. Can we at least get through the first night with sex off the table completely so that I can just like kind of talking and cuddling, kissing, whatever, and just take it off the table so that I can get more comfortable. So lightning round. Uh, Ashley, you want to answer some questions really fast? Yes, I would love to. If the TP is out, toilet paper, do you replace it or do you set a new roll on top of the empty roll? It used to be on topper. Now I'm a replacer. Ooh, I think something happens you. when you turn 30 that yeah. you don't want to live. You don't want to live that way anymore. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Snow White or Cinderella? Cinderella. Snow White looks too much like me. Cinderella for it. sure. Favorite queer movie? Oh yikes! The kids always ask me this. I don't fucking. I guess, but I'm a cheerleader. That's like the first yes. one. I was- okay. Probably that okay. one. I, I also, I'm gonna just be honest. I don't. I'm not sure. I know what the other queer movies are. <laughs> yeah, other than like fried green tomatoes and that one, I'm pretty much the same way. Is it wrong for vegetarians to eat animal crackers? Uh, someone thinks they're clever. Um, yeah, I think it's. I'm gonna fucking take a stance. I think it's wrong. I think oh, you're. Yeah. It's wrong. I think you're a fucking hypocrite if yep. you eat anything shaped like an animal. Yep. in addition to animals. However, if you take the crackers out and then mash them up and then eat them, it ooh, doesn't count. That that doesn't count. That's fine. Uh last song you listened to on repeat. Oh god, I listened to literally everything on repeat. Um I was in my car today <laughs> and the radio came on. I turned on the radio and that song, This is your night. That one? Uh, okay, that one came okay. on. And I was like, oh, I have to listen to that five times. So I turned for <laughs> I, I, I got it on my spot. Fine. I listened to that in the car like six times. It's um, not even a good song. I just have a, my brain. My beep, brain beep, is, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Because really that was young. a terrible isn't like, rendition. Isn't it like I don't the, fucking know what you're talking about. Ooh, it's America or something like that. No, it's like a, it's like a dance. It's like an early oh, 90s no. dance song. 
Oh my God, I can't believe you guys don't know the song. You have no what? lyrics. You didn't give us lyrics. <laughs> this, this is just beep, 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 shit. No. This is your this night. This is your night. A sun in the morning light. <laughs> Together forever, cause this is your night. All right. That one. <laughs> You're old. I just, that was not, a not ringing a bell at all. I went so hard on that one, by Too the way. That was, but um, it's by Spice Girls and Britney Spears apparently. pop off for um, us. Too old. But, uh, well, me too. But this was when I was very young. But I heard it and I was like, I have to play that five times. And there I played go. it five times in my car. There you go. Okay. Um, Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle? Chris Rock. All right. I love, Interesting. I love Chappelle's early stuff. I will probably be one of few comedians that will say that. I think Chris Rock's just one, like my, one of my all-time favorites of like top five, like amazing. Last question, um, Big Spoon or Little Spoon? Big Spoon. There we go, there we go, sweet. Thank you so much, uh, Ashley, for being on this podcast. If you wanna check out more about Ashley, you can find her at Ash Gav's Comedy on TikTok. As always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan and Shay at Shay Morgan. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Help us get discovered by more queer people just like you. That's it for miss this episode. Thank you for listening and subscribing. If you're not subscribed on Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow on Spotify. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We'll see you on the next episode.